And your quote was, I don't believe in miracles, I believe in character. Um, so after doing my homework, I learned not only are you an outstanding football coach, sir, but you're an out, a man of outstanding character. So ladies and gentlemen of Tallahassee Quarterback Club, it is my privilege to introduce you to the legendary coach, Pat Dodd. Thank you very much. It's, it's great to be back in Tallahassee on friendly terms. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I spent, uh, played here twice, and both of them were, were one of them we lost, and the, one of, the other one was a miracle win. And uh, But I remember plays in both of them that stand out, and I'll talk about one of them a little more in detail later on. I want to congratulate the winners and the mamas and daddies and coaches of the youngsters that won their awards here tonight. Uh, you know, my life has been football, and, and I look back over it and, and think about the youngsters and the, and the parents and, and the assistant coaches and me as an assistant coach and all of the things that, that uh, have meant so much in my life that I owe to somebody else, and somebody else is playing just as big a part in it and uh, any success that I had as I was. And I've been very, very fortunate. And you just mentioned one of them in Bo Jackson. Uh, you know, I think about it every day. Where would I, where would I be today if it wasn't for Bo Jackson? And, uh, and I didn't exactly recruit Bo. Bo kind of, Bo kind of recruited himself. <laughs> I, never, I never asked him if he was coming to Auburn. He told me, he said, Coach, I'm coming to Auburn. And uh, I said, well, good. <laughs> he said, I want to play football in the fall and play baseball in one track in the spring. I said, you won't ever have any spring practice obligations. You know, I, but he's just one of hundreds of kids that uh, have played us such a tremendous part in my life and the success, any success that I've had. And it's just the coaches and fans and, and boosters club like this, it's all, it's all part of the, the football family and the football world. And I was just lucky to be a, a small part of it. I, uh, you know, I interviewed for the job down here in 1975 when Coach Bowden came. You're lucky to get the guy that you got. <laughs> so, I mean, because uh, you, you know, building a, building a dynasty and a, and a tradition in what he did here in Tallahassee is a, is a, a kind of, really kind of a wonderful kind thing that, because uh, he's taken it from, well, I guess it was a girls' school in the late, late 40s. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I played against Florida State in, in 58. And they hadn't, they hadn't started football too long. And when did they start football here? 47. 47? Well, you've been playing 11 years when, when I remember Joe Majors was a quarterback. Uh, but, uh, for, and Coach Bowden was a coach here how long? 34 years. Well, he should have quit about 28. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really and truly, and I told him that. I said, get your ass out of this. <laughs> <laughs> taking all that abuse and I said you haven't got too old and senile and don't have the energy I said let turn over let the young ones have it and uh, but uh, you know sometimes we have get get set in a, a lifestyle and it's hard to give it up and uh, but what a great guy and a great coach and a great role model for the kids that played for him and, and been great for this community and Florida State Institution and and I'm glad that doing something to kind of have him out down here now, and because uh, he deserves every bit of. If you think, if you think, oh, go back and just think about what Bobby Bowden has meant to this institution, money-wise, money-wise. What y'all doing down here right now for him is dropping the bucket, and uh, and I, but I as a former coach and uh, they didn't pay us as much as they make today and uh, probably wasn't worth as much as they are <laughs> but uh, you know I, I, I just I've been a fan of Coach Bowden you know since 
way before I thought about coming to Florida State or going to Auburn anywhere else. He just he was just a just a big name in football in the state of Alabama. I uh, and you got a great coach here now and in, in, uh, Jimbo Fisher. I got to know Jimbo when he was coaching at Auburn and and uh, he is a fierce competitor and and has done a great job with the program here. And uh, you know, I mean. For him to be in position to where to play in that game Saturday night and have Florida State in position to play in that game is monumental. And uh, you know the, the game didn't go the way you wanted it to go, but I mean that's life. And uh, right now, I don't think if there's nobody out there that's got the answer to Alabama. And uh, if you beat them, it's going to be an upset. You know, they haven't lost a game in the last seven, eight years that hadn't done an upset. And, uh, and that's, what, that's just the way it is. They got great tradition. Coach Saban does a great job of recruiting. And uh, they can, I see you talking about how good your defense is down here. Somebody got up here and talked about it. Well, you know, that's just, that's just a yearly thing in Alabama. They got one like that, and they got one, they'll have one coming back next year. They just, they're just doing a, an unbelievable job of bringing athletes in there. That, that, uh, and they got them stacked up on top of each other. So they're where everybody else wants to be. No mean you can't beat them. I tell, I tell folks, I said, beating Alabama is easy. They said, well, what do you mean it's easy? I said, well, I know how to beat them. He said, well, to tell me how to beat them. I said, you got to be better than they are at what they're good at. I said, if you're better than they are, what they're good at, you can beat them. And, uh, and that, but that's kind of hard to do now. But uh, you know, I, I came to I came to Auburn in 1981, and uh, we played 36 times in in uh, in uh, just 1981. We won 18, they won 18. So, you know, we ain't setting any records, but we 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 kind of holding our own. You know, we played down here in 1984. How many ever saw that 1984 game? Well, it didn't turn out your way. And, uh, but it was a heck of a football game. And it was one of those games we couldn't stop Florida State. Florida State couldn't, couldn't stop us. We were picked number one in the nation coming out after the 83 season. Probably should claim a national championship in the 83. But we, Miami jumped from fifth to first, and we were third going in, and we all ended up living in one. But anyway, we go, we, we go play Miami in the kickoff classic and get beat 18 to 17. Go to Texas and play Texas and get beat out there. Here we are picked number one in the nation. We done lost two games. I, said, we, I mean, we got to win. And, 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 uh, so we win two or three games, we come into Tallahassee and, and, and Florida State has got a good football team. And we, we kind of struggling. We ain't very good on defense, we de decent on offense. Bo separates his collarbone, uh, gets hurt out there in Texas and can't play. So, but we come in here <coughs> and I, I am really, I'm really, really worried about the game. And I look at the first thing you want to do when the coach gets in the dressing room and looks and sees who the officials are. Well, at the time, Florida State was using the old Sequoia officials, the old Southern Independent officials group. And the year before, in 83, they had two that almost cost us the ball game in, in, in Auburn. One of them was named Alexander, and the other one was named Smith. Now, some of you may know who they are, may know them. I'm sure they're good people, but they're sorry officials. <laughs> <laughs> and particularly when you're playing against Florida State. You could throw it, Florida State could throw it up deep on, on Alexander's side and it was a complete pass or pass interference, one of the two. But anyway, I go in the dressing room, pick up, and there's Smith and Alexander. Now it was a split crew. But the guys that we had at the SEC, they wouldn't call nothing. The umpire, we had the umpire, he's the a, he's a guy that sees all that holding and all that stuff going on in there. 
Lord have mercy, about the, in the third or fourth quarter, and we were back and forth, one taking the lead and back and forth. Florida had it, Florida State had it third and eight. Run the draw, make a first down. I was on by throwing the flag. I said, Phew. I said, he finally come through. <laughs> so the line Florida State, I think it was, it was whatever. And uh, I called him for holding out. It was, it was a long, it was a 15-yard penalty. They come back, Florida State comes back and runs the same play again for 25 yards <laughs> and makes the first down and then they going down and score. Well, the game's swapping back and forth. And Florida State's got the ball and we can't stop them. I'll tell you what happened in that ball game. We had a little old freshman defensive back come off the field crying. It didn't, it didn't know, it didn't know, we didn't send a substitution and he just run off the field. <laughs> I said, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> he said, Coach, I can't cover them. I can't cover them. You had Joy Hester and Hassan Jones. I said, we ain't got nobody can cover them. Get your ass back. <laughs> 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 so, but anyway, Florida State's coming down the field, and Coach Bowden was the best play caller that I have ever coached against. He could, he could, he had, he just had a feel for it. If you know, if he, and they come down and they're about the 15 yard line and they run the reverse. Well, the quarterback pitches the ball to the tailback, the tailback handed to, had a little old short guy running flank. It wasn't, it wasn't one of them, but it's, he could ruin it. But he, he comes out there. Well, the quarterback peels out there and clips on defense and then hits him square in the back, he clips him. Guy runs in for a touchdown and Florida State takes the lead. I run out there and it's out on Alexander's side of the field. I said, he clicked him, he clicked him. He said, I saw it, I saw it. I said, well, call you, throw your flag. He said, it wasn't my call. I said, who the hell's call was it? It was an umpire's call. I said, well, tell him to throw his flag. He said, I did, but he said it was a clean block. I said, what the hell is going on out there? By that time, Florida State lined up and kicked the, kicked the neck. When they kicked the next morning, it was good. We go back down the field, they kick it back off to us. Or we go right back down the field. Now, I don't, really, I don't know whether this place is like that now, but back then when the noise got up, there's fire running out on top of the stadium. <laughs> Does it still do that? No. no. Well, I tell you what, that was a, that was a, that was a, that was a hard thing on this and teams that need to put it back in. <laughs> well, we got it first and goal at the 12. Now remember these numbers, first and goal at the 12. We run the bootleg. Pat Washington, my quarterback, comes out there. Our guard pulls out there in front. Strong six comes up to contain the plate. He hits him in the chest and knocks him out of bounds. Pat turns up field and scores. Alexander, that couldn't call that play on the other end, said it wasn't his call through his flag. I said, what is, what is the call? He said he, he said he clipped him. I said, no, he didn't clip him. I said, he hit him right in the chest. He said, well, I saw it as a clip. I said, there ain't no way you could see that as a clip down here and didn't see that as a clip on the other end. He said, well, that's what I call. I, he, I said, I know that's what you call. I said, I want to talk. He said, get off the field. I said, I ain't going nowhere. He said, get off the field. I said, I'm going to talk to the guy in the white hat. So he throws this flag. So we got 15 yards for the clip, 15 yards for the unsportsmanlike conduct. We walk, he's walking off in 30 yards and I'm walking down the field steady talking to him. And, and uh, I said, I want to talk to the guy in the white hat. So finally he got his attention, he came over there and me in the white hat, the fellow talked about Smith. We talked about it a little bit and he dropped his flag. <laughs> so we got 15 more. Well, my big old nose guard, Ben Thomas, Wait about 280 or 290, he reaches and grabs me up and gathers me. He said, come on, coach. said, you got to get off the field. One more and they're going to kick you out of here. <laughs> so I go back over there to the sideline. And the fire is lit up the sky. <laughs> I mean, the damn fireworks is going off everywhere. And I mean, I'm looking up there at the scoreboard, and my eyes come on down the scoreboard. And it's first and fifty-five. <laughs> I looked at my I looked at my offensive coordinator. I said, "You got a good first and fifty-five call." <laughs> 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 
There's another, there's an ending to the story now. Some things come around. So, Florida State scores and goes ahead with about two minutes to go in the game. We run the wishbone. I said, there ain't no way we can score in two minutes running the wishbone. But we hit a little old stomp around the guy, one about 30 yards. And then we hit the seam right to the tight end. He went about 35 yards in two plays. Well, when the guy caught the first one, you know, when they make a first down, you move the change. You're supposed to stop the clock till you get the change. Said, well, they never stopped the clock. I run out there on the field. I, I said, hey, stop the clock, stop the clock, stop the clock. Well, I couldn't. He said, get off the field. I couldn't stay out there because if they penalize me now 15 yards, I'm going to get, it's going to be first and 25. And we got two minutes to score, so I would get on off the field. But they didn't stop the clock. They run off 20 seconds, getting the chain set. Well, the next play, we go to the five-yard line, and we gonna score too quick. We gonna be leaving too much time because they were scoring their wheel. And sure enough, we run the sweep in the end zone for a touchdown. Went ahead, 41 to 42, or 42-41. to they got 30 seconds there, and I said, Lord, I said, they, I said, all they had to do is kick a field goal. All they had to do is make two first downs, three first downs. When the clock went zero, zero, they had completed the pass on the last down to our 30-yard line. If they hadn't run them 20 seconds off the clock, <laughs> they had time to kick a damn field goal. <laughs> Sometimes things have a, have a way of working, working it out. You know, uh, kind of, and I'm not one of these guys that thinks it's better when I played or when I coached. Or when, you know, you know, people are the same. People are the same. I mean, you know, they got different toys now. They got different things that they do. But you, you know, we critical of these children that hold that damn phone up to the ears and walking around punching buttons and on, all of that stuff. Skitter and Twitter and <laughs> else, man, whatever, whatever it all is, you know, I can't even, I can't even hardly make a telephone call on mine. <laughs> but anyway, they just got different toys. And if we'd have had that stuff that they got today, as crazy as we were when we was young, we'd have been right in the dang middle of it. Now, don't say you wouldn't have. And because uh, I know what it was like, you know, they were just doing it with beer and wine and white lightning and whatever on the weekends back then. It wasn't, we didn't know nothing about smoking dope and all that other stuff that they do now. And we knew what that alcohol would do for you. Now, and now I, did, I, wasn't a, I wasn't a big partaker in that. I was, I was a country boy and I liked to hunt fish. And most of the time I was at home hunting and fishing on the weekends, but it was interesting to hear the stories when I got back on Sunday night about who got in a fight and who got locked up and who should have got locked up and all the, all the stuff that went on within players back then. This is in the 50s. But it was going on before then and it went on since then. But now, when they, when they, they I mean, they got them, you know. We set out three Saturday night. Florida set out 10 or 11. LSU set out whatever. And, and uh, you know, they had rules and regulations and, and stuff, and I don't, I don't really understand all of it, all the ones that they got. Uh, my philosophy was, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what will break them up from doing that stuff. You get to ass up at five o'clock in the morning and take them to that stadium, you let them run 25 of them things up, up down at the top. You do that for about two or three weeks. I tell you what, they might not make them quit smoking dope, but it'll damn sure make them careful with it. <laughs> if that don't work, you can make them. You can put now. This this will get child cruelty here. Man. We have put. We have put concrete blocks in the hand when they, you know, so on repeaters. You know, the ones that we, we had, but we we had we had to, we disciplined, you know, good and and uh, but I 
I love the game today. And again, you know, now Florida State and Miami, I mean, in Florida State and Alabama are a lot alike. Both of them are pro-type pro -type offense, and and uh, and they run, you know, both of them, everybody in the country is doing about the same thing on defense. It, it may be getting to it in a different way, but doing about the same thing. You just team with the best players that plays the best defense, and, and uh, but we all lined up about the same way. And uh, but offensively, what we're doing at Auburn gives us a chance to beat people with better players than we got, more talent than we got. When you can eliminate one with the read, and one with the pitch, then you play 11 against nine. You saw Fort Georgia Tech do it last night and rush over 500 yards against Tennessee. That's what they were doing. They eliminate one with the read, one with the pitch, the quarterback is, you know, and uh, I think, I really think in college football in our, in our life, and it, when you, as good as some of these teams, the sure way to win is have the best players and be sound, don't turn it over, win in the kicking game, and, and not let them score on defense. That's the surest way to win. And that's what I've I been doing, and that's what they, and that's what they're capable of doing. But last year, Clemson run a conventional offense. They wouldn't have scored 20 points against Alabama. But they had a quarterback back there. He could run. And he could throw. And he made Alabama, he spread the field, stretched the field vertically and horizontal and, 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 and horizontally. And and all of the stuff that they're doing offensively, all that, you know, the experts call it eye candy, you know to fool you about where the ball's going here, there, and everywhere. Uh, it, gives, it gives people with a, with a chance to, to win when they don't, they don't have to line up and put a hat on a hat. You know, I, 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 let me leave this with you, and I'm gonna, I've talked too long already too, just like you did, John. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm 77 years old. And I can live another 77 years, and I can never do what, do for Auburn what Auburn has done for me in my life. And there's two things in my life that have given me quality of life that I don't think I could have enjoyed without it. I know it has, without it. And, and when you get my age, you think about why things turned out the way they did, or you know who you are and where you come from, and all, all of this stuff that you, you, you just kind of took for granted when you're going through life trying to make a living and, and do what you do. But just, I got two things that, that I've been able to do that serve me well, and I didn't plan it, and I don't really know that I, how, how it happened, but it happened. I've got a tremendous capacity to love. Now, I ain't talking about just loving my family and, and love in Auburn. I'm talking about loving my dogs and my cats and my horses and you and America and Auburn and just like you love Florida State. Having that a capacity to love and that feeling that you get and that closeness and, and, that, and that's a wonderful thing. To be able to just you know, it hurts. It, it's, it, you take it a chance because it can hurt you when you love something and somebody in, in, in uh, you know. But you've got to have guts enough to say, you know, if you love somebody, love them. Don't, don't hedge on it. Just go ahead. And if, and if there's pain involved in it, be, be strong enough to withstand the pain to enjoy the love. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. And having the ability to forgive. Some of you in here, I don't know who you are. You got some burdens you're taking around with you. You got some some grievances with people, or somebody, or something that happened to you. Turn it loose. Ain't hurt nobody but you. Ain't bothering nobody but you. Nobody gives a damn about it but you. 
And so why carry it around on your shoulders? Turn it loose and let it go. Having the ability to forgive. You just think about those two things on the way home tonight. And uh, you, you, if, you, if you think back, you can uh, you say, well, you know, he's right about that. I think I'm right about it. And it's been a wonderful thing, a wonderful life. Folks, I've enjoyed being with you. I'm fixing to get in that car and drive back to Auburn tonight. Lynn, where's Lynn? Lynn's right back there. She's my chauffeur. <laughs> she didn't get lost for three times coming down here. We'll be paid like that. <laughs> Thank you very much. I want to be with you. Let's go, go.